be badass. Subscribe, like, and share. You know, I said in one of my videos the other day that the most important rule for us has always been kill shit, don't die. When you play Trials, it's reversed. It's oh. don't die, kill shit. Let's take a time out and do a Trials tutorial, shall we? Let's back out. I'm gonna go into a private match. I know it's too late because this map resets, but Trials rotates maps and eventually it will be this map, okay? So, in a video game, you have your map, right? But that doesn't mean that the entire map is used regular, regularly, okay? There's usually uh, patterns or spots where most of the action takes place. That happens on every single map. And you can know where that place is or where those places are based on your own experience and where you die or where you're battling people more often than others. Those spots are different in six versus six. They're different <clears throat> in three versus three. They're also different in rumble and they're also different in elimination. So each, each map in three versus three in trials, you start at a spawn. Okay. And when you spawn in, especially based on who you're facing, um, you usually go to that spot where you're planning on doing your battle. Here's Frank. Let's, let's pretend Frank is on our team, okay? So come over here, Frank. So you can get really, 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 really in-depth with how you approach each game. Some people just load into the game. Whatever they have on, that's what they're going to use, and they go after the other team and just try to do their best, kill shit, don't die. Some people then spec out their entire loadout based on the map or based on their enemies. Oh, this guy is using arc. Let's put on risk runner. Oh, this person is using this. Let me put on that. Oh, we've got two snipers. Let me put on a sniper. Oh, we got a shotgunners. Let me put on my shotgunner. So how you approach the game depends on not only the map, but also the other team. Okay. So round one might go one way. Round two might go another way. Round three, another way. So you have to adapt. And if you're if you're winning, then you probably are just gonna keep doing what's working for you. But if you're losing, you need to change your approach and adapt, okay? So if we spawn in here, the reason why we've been going to this spot up here and locking it down is because this area is where most of the battles, and you guys have probably seen this in trials, most of your encounters have happened in this area. And that's for a lot of different reasons on this map. Number one, biggest reason, is this is the final zone. So think of it like Warzone. You know how you want to get to the final circle and you kind of want to hold it down? A lot of people like to lock down this area so that when the zone spawns, if it is a stalemate, if you can hold this area, then you also own the zone and you can easily capture it. So what you do is you come to this area and you look to see where your enemies are. Usually, people go, if they're spawning in the other area, somebody always jumps across to B. We've been doing that. And why is that? Well, because the people holding this area down are usually right here. And there's, there's a perfect spot right there at B. Also, that's why, that's why people then hide behind this rock, because it's hard for you to see them, and they have a perfect view of B. So, you have to know that. You have to know that coming into this map because so when we come over here, when we run to this spot, me as a player, I'm waiting for that guy to jump across to B. And you've seen us do it. Watch the guy at B. If he comes over here, if he's by himself, we murder this guy right away. And that leaves us a three versus two. Okay. The other person might come in this cave right here. And then sometimes what we've been seeing is people rotate around to get the flank in the circle room. All right. So when we spawn in on this side, you have to know those details coming in. So we're not just running blindly to this spot. We're running here for various reasons. Number one, lock down this area. Number two, wait for this guy to jump across to B. Or maybe he's in the cave. Look at your radar. Is somebody coming around a circle room? 
So even though we come here and we lock it down, we're still processing information on, on how the battle is going to go. If nobody is in this area, then chances are they're probably all flanked. They're, they're rotating so they can be the people that come and lock down this spot. Does that make sense so far? Yes. Yes. So when we come here, you're looking at your radar. When I when I spawn in and I run, I am not literally not looking at the ground or where I'm going. I'm looking up top at the radar. Up top it says cliff, passage, and I see red, it says center. And it's also why we've been coming to this spot right here, because your radar your radar tells you where the enemies are going to be. And at this spot right here, my radar is showing me if somebody's going to be in the cave, if somebody's going to jump across to B, and if somebody's going to be in coming around circle room. Our radar is literally telling us where where to look and where to shoot people. We're going to lose this, ah, this round. Sorry, yeah. Frank. Sorry. Just stay alive. Stay alive. So it's a tie. Does that make sense? So that's why we've been coming here. When we come... When we come to these steps, the reason why this wasn't working for us with with the people I was playing with. Some people can come here and make it work. We've lost to people here. Another thing is your team chemistry and knowing... Don't capture his own. I'm not! Well, but back away. This is it. Let me try and reset it real quick. Uh, oh, you're okay. just going to make oh, us well. win. It's going to be us, yeah. Um, Your team kept this tool under pressure. So see how that zone spawn? Um, yes, yes. Okay, so now we're going to spawn from the opposite side. Frank, we'll wait for, wait for you to come over here. So, knowing all of what I just said, where do you think this team is going to go? Well, they, this team, Kilo, come back. Th these games, Destiny can be, well, all PvP shooters can be very repetitive. When you learn a map and you know where people like to hide and where people like to set up just based on your own experience and your averages, then it makes it easier to predict what there to do and where hard. to go. So, we spawn in here. Guess where we're going? We're going to go confront the team. We, we already okay. know where they're going to be because 90% of the battles are in the same spot. So, this is why I say get there first. Whoever gets there first usually has an advantage. The faster you get there, the sooner you can throw a grenade where you think they're going to be. Right? How many times have we been wiped because we got here late and there was a grenade waiting for us? That's True. why That's why speed and predictability, getting the jump on the other team, is so important in this game. Especially when you have a grenade that you can lead with. So we always try and get here, and we always try to... I didn't know I could sit with you. No. We always try and watch <laughs> this spot right here. You guys aren't yeah. paying attention, are you? Yes, the spot right oh. there, yes. Yeah, over here. All right. Um, because, based on our previous example, that's where people are most likely to be. And again, if we get to this spot right here, our radar now tells us if people are in that spot, if they're on the stairs to the left or then the right cave. here right here or in the cave also now that we're over here if you look and you only see one guy here okay you sometimes there's a team of three one well-placed grenade will wipe that entire team if they're grouped up and you got the backstop wall that you can bounce it off of but if you only see one guy chances are his teammate is to the left on the stairs waiting or maybe at that rock unless you see radar over here then what we've been seeing is because people know that people like to go to B and hold it down you've been seeing people try and snipe they go out on this ledge and they try and snipe the people that are so focused on this spot so in the NFL the quarterback they do what's called checks right four receivers run out and the quarterback has a receiver number one that he, he checks first. Receiver number one. Okay, he's covered. He checks. Then he goes to receiver number two. He checks that guy. Okay, he's covered. Then he checks receiver number three. Okay, he's covered. So let's check receiver number four. Throw it to that guy. Does that make sense? So what we do when we come over here is we do those same checks. 
We hurry up and we get there. We try to get here first. And based on our radar, if there's people there, you try and get the quick pick, throw them out. Because whoever gets the first kill wins the majority of the time. Because it's then three against two. So you get here first or you get over there first. You check your radar to get to see where the enemy team is at. You try and get a quick pick. That's why snipers are so important. And then based off of that, you only have a couple seconds before the enemy team is going to start making their moves towards you. So if you don't get a quick pick, you have to be on the lookout for them trying to make a move as well. Okay, we didn't get anybody down. A couple seconds go by. Okay, let's check this far left side. Yep, there's a sniper over there. You don't see him? Okay, there might be a guy who rotated right. You always have to be processing what is the enemy team doing at this point yeah. in time. Yeah. Um, and then based on based on their subclasses. Okay, Shatter Dive. This, this doorway is a perfect area to throw grenades because, again, based on our previous information, people are probably behind that wall. If you throw a grenade, you might kill all three, which has happened to us many times today. All right. Yeah. Um, so it's all about trying to know what the enemy is going to do before they do it. And getting the quick pick. Getting the first death is so important in elimination. I cannot stress this enough. Getting the first kill is the most important thing. Once you get somebody down... Based on their position, then you go down the list. Okay, we, it's three versus two. Now what? Well, are they all right there waiting? If they are, then you got to kind of play it a little bit safe. Are they spread out? Okay, one guy is there getting the res. We have to stop them from getting the res. But it could be a bait. There's there's just there's so much. There's, there's so much. That's why, that's why it's hard to make call-outs because... There's so many variables of, of what could be happening in yeah. the moment, right? It's not just as simple as we got somebody down, let's push in. It's we got somebody down, uh, can we push in? Or are they waiting for us to push in so that they can take us out? Right. You know, think yeah. of what you, the best thing I can give you as far as advice is try to remember your own experiences and what you think because the enemy is thinking the same exact things, right? If right. if Kilo dies, then I know right then and there, Kilo has died. They are looking to push in. So what I then do is based on my radar and our positioning and all that stuff, if Kilo's go if Kilo's dead and it's 3 versus 2, we are not going to be the aggressor because right, right. there's only two of us. The enemy team knows that. They are, they are going to try to push in. Okay, so now I know that. So I'm going to try and keep them back off. Backed off, sorry. I'm going to try to res while I shoot at them. Hold the square button, and you hit fire. You don't even have to hit them, guys. If Kilo is dead, Kilo can... Are you able to blow yourself off? Never mind. Never mind. Let's pretend Kilo is dead. All right, Frank. There you go. Go stand in the cave, Frank. Okay. Asshole. When you get a res, you got to strafe so that they can't snipe you. So you try and hit me, Frank. But let's say I was resing Kilo. My job with Frank is not to kill him. It's just to take shots at him. So that he backs off. Because, again... See? I backed you off. And now, it, and now we back up, get our health back, and it's yep. three versus three again. And if if we're really on point with our teamwork, we we drew them in because they're going to try and stop us from getting the res. Now they're here, and now we can easily just... Because they're out of cover. There's so much strategy. That It's why I love Trials. And it's why I love this mode and Elimination and why it's so much fun. And why it's so hard... If you don't have a solid team who's good at strategy and communication, because as you can see, there's a lot going on that you have to, to process, not only as a player, but as a team. So me as a player, I am processing all this information while I play, while also listening to my teammates 
give me feedback on where the enemy is, what they're doing. I got one down. I got one down. He's on me, on me. You know, like everything in this game is so quick, quick paced. You know, if my teammate gets somebody down, I'm immediately thinking push, but not, not at the cost of getting drawn in and baited to where I die. It's a careful push, you know? And then if, if two people are down, it's a definite push most of the time. All three of you just bum rush or two of you bum rush. Two on one, two on one is easier than three versus two. If that makes sense. Not in all scenarios. Yeah. And, and none of this is, none of this is absolutely 100% foolproof. There's variables to everything. Good players, you know, can manipulate the flow by doing different things. It's not just as straightforward as just shoot the other guy. You know, I said in one of my videos the other day that the most important rule for us has always been kill shit, don't die. When you play trials, it's reversed. It's oh. don't die, kill shit. Don't die is the number one rule in trials. Um, team shooting is very important. That's why call outs are very important. Knowing where the enemy is going to be is very important. And all these different areas, when you learn a map, all these different areas, you can predict what to do and where to do it based on where people, just where people are standing. Yeah. If they're in the cave, if I'm standing here in the cave, people are going to be right here. Or they're going to be right here. You know that. You just know that. If I say cave, you just know they're going to yeah. be in, in this spot. If I say B, you know he's probably going to be right around here somewhere. Yeah. Unless he's like way... Some people have been way back here. Yeah. But eventually, it gets to the point as a player where you're ignoring a lot of the areas of the map. You, I don't... I never... I hardly ever look at this spot. Only one minute left. And I hardly ever look at this spot unless my radar lights up. Yeah. <clears throat> You know, um, you just start to know it's the hot spots. You ever watch the eye tracking software? It's the hot yeah. spots. You just do yeah. these checks. And that's why people have such quick reaction times is because they're not looking like right now. I'm not looking, not looking at the whole screen. I'm not looking at this pillar. I'm not looking at this spot. I'm not looking here. I'm looking right here. This is where I look every single time. And then if I see nobody there, I look at my radar and I see, oh, it's lit up this way. Okay, they're right here. You're ignoring 75% of, of what's on your screen. And the, the, the quicker you get at that, the better you get at that, the faster your reaction time is to know where, where people are and where to shoot them. And then again, Looking at Frank, he's not a shatter dive. I don't, I don't have to worry about him throwing a grenade right here, shattering it, and it wiping out the entire team that's in a rift right here. I don't have to worry about that. That's knowledge I already have, right? So it all yeah, yeah. knowledge builds on knowledge, builds on knowledge, builds on knowledge. It's like I said the other day when somebody talked about loadouts and mods for kilo. It's like this ain't this ain't our problem. This will help. But map knowledge, how the mode works, all that knowledge, it's like doing addition against people that are doing, you know, uh, trigonometry or advanced calculus. They're just, their knowledge is, is way beyond. And then there's three of them, and, you know, there's only one of us who regularly plays and understands what's about to happen. And so what happens with me is you hear me get loud. And it's because I'm, I'm trying to get all this knowledge and all this information out to my teammates for them to understand as fast as humanly possible. Um, yeah. Now, for me, what I need to improve is being more patient. And I need to improve my uh, one verse three tactics, which is what I've talked about in the past. And the, the better I get at that, the more... I can sort of just hang back. See, I got shot. I got shot from Frank, and I have no idea where Frank is at, all right? But I have a good idea with where he's at. Yeah, dude, you that's unfair right there. So I know, and this is this is what I did that one match. I got shot. 
one time from one angle and I know exactly where he's at just based on where the shot came from is right there behind that rock yeah and he's probably gonna be see how that grass mm -hmm. pops out a little bit and so what I did the one match was we we're coming to B and I'm focused on these guys here and I got shot and I knew from the yep. sound effect it was a mita so I knew that that guy is far away, and that's why he's got that on, and he's probably behind that rock. So what I did was just poked out, and I lined up my sight right there. And I just, I kept it there, and I just pre-fired. I'm just trying to help my teammates a little bit, share the wealth of knowledge. And again, this is all just information that you have to learn. There, the step past that after you know all this stuff and after you've become aware and you've you've got experience doing all this you also got to execute you also then got to pull it off you know it's like think of when you do a raid when you do a raid for the first time you get your ass kicked because you don't know the mechanics of that encounter and then the first step is learn all the different encounters or i'm sorry the first step is to learn all the mechanics so that you know what to do in the encounter so that you know what to expect. And then once you know that information, then you gotta do it, which is a whole nother experience. So can you see why, to all the people out there that are like, oh, you know, you guys suck or whatever. And you're sitting in trials all weekend, all the time for the last couple of years. And you're saying that to people who've played it, you know, maybe 30 times. It's just unrealistic. Does that make sense, chat? You can see how it's it's a lot more than just shooting people in trials. It's it's literally a game yeah. of chess. And when you have people that don't know all that information or don't know what to do or don't know what to expect, it makes it hard to communicate, makes it hard to plan and strategize. Uh, it, it makes the whole experience different. Mm -hmm thing is is every map is different the traffic patterns on maps are different uh it's almost like people i know people talk about uh they want new maps and stuff like that but really you're just gonna no life the game till you till you learn the map anyway and and it's all about map strategy so what does it matter if the map is new or old you know, ban we could play Bannerfall every every day for all I care. When a map is good, it's timeless. And you just, you play it, it's like an arena. You just play it. And you play it based on different areas. And if I were to name different maps, like Pantheon, well, it's not called Pantheon anymore. It's uh, Convergence, that's what it is, Convergence. If I were to ask you, Close how it. do you play Convergence, you would say, easy. Capture A, capture B, stay at B, cut them off. Right? Everybody knows that by now. Burning Shrine. A and C, cut them off, keep them outside. So, like, different maps have different strategies. They have a strategy for 6 vs. 6. They have a strategy for 3 vs. 3. They have a strategy for elimination. So, knowing that gives you an advantage over another team that doesn't. No time to explain. Holy shit. And then, and then on top of all that, then you get into the mods, then you get into the loadouts, then you get into the builds, then you get into the, the weapons and all that kind of stuff. Now, that's the beginner's course. Now we're going to do advanced trials. No, I'm kidding. Oh, God. Now, see, the thing is, is against a good team, a really good team that, that has a lot of map awareness and trials knowledge and game knowledge not even not even counting skill just a good team they are it's like i said with chess it's the back and forth they're trying to counter everything we do they're they're trying to do all the different things that we're doing so it, it really is a trying to out strategize the other team which is what made trials so popular in the first place yeah I get it. I get it. I just have to get better at PvP.
Well, there's things, but the thing is, what I'm trying to explain is there are things you can do that don't take skill. It's just knowledge. Like, yeah. like I said with the resing, being someone that's able to get a res and keep a body off and, and keep them back. That's why, like, there will be people that play trials and they're like, I got carried. I didn't do anything. Yeah, but you got reses. You uh, threw grenades to keep them off the bodies. You kept them from resing. There's a lot Everybody of important stuff. Part. Yeah, there's a lot of important stuff you can do without without ever killing somebody. So like I know I know I yell a lot when I play and I know that I'm, you know, running around shooting things and especially at the beginning of the streams we do the intro and uh I'm just playing, you know, run and gun and stuff. When it comes down to it, there's a lot of information that you as a player have to process in this game. And some people just know more information based on experience and playing regularly and knowing what to expect where it's easier for them to process all that. And just because I run around, you know, yelling and ah! like, what is Chris's <coughs> impression? Ah! Ah! You know, I run around and do that a lot for fun. It doesn't mean that I don't have the knowledge to know what we should do in different situations. And sometimes it changes. Sometimes you know what to do and just can't pull it off. And that's where you need to get good. Communication is the most important part of these games. And with all this information that you got to process, if somebody can, you know, give you the answer, he's on me or he's down or he's right there, that information solves, uh, makes it so that you don't have to process all the inf information. You have the answer. That's why communication is so important.